Hello, welcome back to The Great Explorer. I hope this video finds you safe and well. Today is quiz day, and I thought it would be a good time to do a Wine and Spirit Education Trust related video. This is the WSET Level 2 quiz. Now, I know through the comments I receive on my videos that a lot of you are studying this particular qualification, so this is the perfect opportunity for you to test your knowledge. But it's also a good opportunity for those of you who may have taken it in the past, just to see if what you learn has managed to stay in your head. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm the Grape Explorer. I bring wine education, product reviews, and lots of tastings. So if you're thinking about studying wine or you're in the process of studying wine, this is the ideal channel for you, so consider subscribing. Okay, let's jump straight into question one. As always, 10 questions, all multiple choice. Let's get started. So question one, which one of the following can be used to make premium quality wines in cool, moderate and hot climates? Is it A, Chardonnay? Is it B, Riesling? Is it C, Pinot Noir? Or is it D, Sauvignon Blanc? The WSET workbook is very much based around the grape varieties at level two. So you will co actually cover all of these grape varieties. They're considered the key varieties at this level. And when you start to go through the book, you get a breakdown about where these grapes are grown, as well as an indication of what the climate is like. And only one of these uh, suggests premium wine in cool, moderate and hot climates. So if you've gone for Chardonnay A, that's a good start, well done. Question two is about one of the most popularly grown grapes around the world. Premium wines made from Cabernet Sauvignon age well because they have what? Is it A, high tannin and low acidity? B, low tannin and high acidity? C, low tannin and low acidity? Or D, high tannin and high acidity? Now it just so happens that today I have got some Cabernet Sauvignon in my glass. Uh, this is from the 2014 vintage if I remember rightly. So this has got a little bit of age on it and it's able to go through the aging process so well because of its high tannin and high acidity. So if you've gone for answer D, you've got another one ticked off. Question three then is a region based question looking into the qualities of that region. So the best vineyards of the Northern Rhone are what? Are they A, coastal? Are they B, steep? Are they C, poorly drained? Or are they D, flat? When I did WSET level two, one of the things that I learned and that I've talked about before is that more often than not with these multiple choice questions, two of them are, are incorrect. And I think there are two here that you can immediately discount. I don't know anywhere where a poorly drained vineyard uh, is a good reason for producing good grapes. And similarly, you know, coastal areas with its moderating influences and steep areas with its exposure to sun are going to be a lot more beneficial than a flat area. So it comes down to A or B. Well, if you know your Northern Rhone, you'll know that the correct answer is B. They have some particularly steep vineyards and those steep vineyards with their fantastic exposure to the sun create fantastic grape growing uh, environments for perfectly premium wines. Okay, question four about a popular Bordeaux wine. So on the nose, the aroma characteristics of a mature Margot would typically be A, black fruit, tobacco and cedar, B, tropical fruit, floral and spice, C, green fruit, vegetal and oak, or D, citrus fruits, nut and oak. So the first thing you need to work out is what a Margot actually uh, would be. Um, bit of a clue here in that it may contain some Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, it's on the left bank of Bordeaux, so it would be a Bordeaux blend, including Cabernet Sauvignon. So that might be a clue as to what to expect in the uh, glass. But I think the thing with this particular question is whilst there's lots of aroma and flavour descriptors listed here, there's only actually one of them that aligns itself to red wine. And the correct answer here is A. It's black fruit, tobacco and cedar. Question five then is a question about fortified wines. So which of the following is a common labelling term for port? Is it A, NV? Is it B, VS? Is it C, LBV? Or is it D, PX? Now, if I can remember my level two uh, correctly, uh, one of these has nothing to do with uh, wines at all. 
Uh, VS, I believe, is more associated with spirits. So that leaves us with NV, LBV and PX. Uh, PX, many of you will know, is associated with Sherry, Pedro Jimenez. So that leaves us with NV and LBV. Now, so the correct answer here is actually C, it's LBV, which stands for Late Bottled Vintage. Uh, question six then, now WSCT talks about the service of wine as well, and this is something that may happen during service. So cork taint is identified by what? Is it A, bits of cork in the bottle? Is it B, a brown colouring? Is it C, musty aromas? Or is it D, toffee and caramel aromas? Uh, the last thing anyone wants, of course, is a wine fault, but these typically do present themselves when wine is being served because you're opening that bottle for the first time. The correct answer here is C. Cork taint presents itself as musty aromas, so if you've got that one correct, tick another one off. And just as an FYI, I think that musty aromas would be a great name for an adult entertainment star. Moving on to question number seven now, which asks that you pair a region with a grape. So which grape variety is used to make Merceau? Is it A, Chardonnay? Is it B, Cabernet Sauvignon? Is it C, Sauvignon Blanc? Or is it D, Syrah? Now again, what you need to be able to do with this question is work out where in the world Merceau is, because that potentially is gonna give you a clue to the grape varieties that are used in that region. That's something that level two does a really good job of. Like I say, it's, it's led by great variety, but then it starts to talk about the countries around the world that would grow that variety and the regions where that takes place. Merceau, of course, can be found in Burgundy, which really only leads to one answer once you know that, and that is A, Chardonnay. Question number eight puts your Italian wine knowledge to the test. What term is used on an Italian wine label to indicate that the grapes were grown in the historic centre of the district? Is it A. Criantha? Is it B. Reserva? Is it C. Classico? Or is it D. Cortese? Uh, interesting question in that the answers are quite interesting here. Uh, many of you will know, of course, that Criantha is a Spanish labelling term. Um, you, many of you will also know that Cortese is a grape variety. So really it comes down to whether it's Reserva or Classico. Uh, the correct answer here is C, it's Classico. That's the name for an indication that the grapes were grown in the historic center. Okay, on to question nine, and I think just showing how broad the subject is at WSET, how much you do need to learn. Uh, this is another region and grape variety question. So premium Chilean Sauvignon Blanc is produced in which of the following regions? Is it A, Catalonia? Is it B, Central Otago? Is it C, Caneros? Or is it D, Casablanca? For me, the challenge with this one is the way that they've worded the answers. They all begin with the letter C, which might throw some people off the scent in terms of trying to identify a region. So then it comes down to deducting, well, where do these particular regions belong? Catalonia belongs in Spain. Central Otago belongs in New Zealand. And I think those two would probably be discounted first, leading you to Caneros and Casablanca. Um, Caneros is actually in California. So the correct answer here is D, it's Casablanca. And finally, question 10. Uh, we started on a question about Chardonnay, if I can remember 10 minutes back. Uh, we're gonna end on Chardonnay as well. Which of the following are commonly used to add complexity to premium dry Chardonnay wines? Is it one, floor yeast? Is it two, botrytis? Is it three, lees stirring? Or is it four, barrel fermentation? So your answers here are either A, one and two, B, two and three, C, three and four, and D, one and four. What level two does, um, albeit in, in a much smaller way, is give you an indication of some of the um, wine making processes that a gr certain grapes may go through. Chardonnay wines are known to produce really premium quality styles when they're subject to both lees stirring and barrel fermentation. So for those of you who finished with C, answers three and four, you've got that one correct, well done. So there we go, 10 questions to test your knowledge at WSCT level two. 
As always, I'd really like to hear your scores below. I hope that my previous videos, which are still available, have helped you with your studies, your education, as well as always putting your knowledge to the test. And if you've already got these qualifications, that they're here for pure fun. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I'm the Grape Explorer. Look forward to seeing you all again soon. Cheers.